Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Anatomy of the 12 Steps uh, Group 2022. I am Abby. I am uh, one of your hosts for tonight's step study. I am a recovering codependent and an adult child. Tonight, we're delving into step eight. And um, I'd like, so I've already introduced myself and I'd like to introduce the other trusted servants that will be assisting our group tonight. Catherine and Ellen, if you could wave your hands and say hello. Hi. Thank you. Hi there. Well, each of us will spend about three to five minutes talking about this step from our personal experiences and then open up the room for discussion where you can talk about your discovery as it pertains to this step. Typically, we'll wrap, wrap this up around nine o'clock and go over next week's homework and close this out. As we've been doing- Excuse you know, me, I am, I am so sorry. Okay, and if everybody could mute themselves, that would be great. Um, so, uh, sorry about that. Um, so typically we wrap this up around nine, nine fifteen, and go up and then go into next week's homework, um, our serenity prayers and, and close this out as always, um, as we've been doing, some of us will stay on later to answer any questions that you may have regarding step eight or just, um, our program in general. Um, another reminder, we do not cross talk in this meeting to keep strong boundaries and maintain the focus of, the, of our step work on ourselves. No matter how long you've been involved in a 12 step program, you're a valuable member with your own experiences. And no matter what brought you into the room, the solution is the same. The 12 step recovery program of your choosing. I'd like to get us started and I'm going to be sharing um, step eight from my CODA point of view. Step eight reads, made a list of all persons we have harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. When I first read these words, I skimmed over the word willing to make amends to them all. I concentrated on the words, make amends to them all. What an overwhelming prospect to have to reach out to every person I had ever reacted codependently toward. My harms typically have a pattern that allow me to get in touch with the emotion that prompted me to react in whatever situation was at hand. I may have judged them, thinking they were judging me. I may have lied to them and to myself to make myself look better, or to look at as either I was the victor or the victim or vice versa. I may have even acted out in rage to let somebody know that I was unworthy of respect. Yikes, this could be a long list. Lyrics from an Avert Brothers song that I like called Tell the Truth asks, I want to make amends, but where do I start? Tell the truth to yourself and the rest will fall into place, it responds. Step eight only asks me to be willing, willing to start, willing to start to make my amends list. I've already admitted that I was a reactor to fears and resentments in my past. And in turn, this made me reactive to others supporting my defense traits, defensive traits, but not my recovery tra traits. I am now ready to have these defects of characters removed from my nature and certainly my past. With the help of a thorough step four inventory of fears, resentments, and conduct, I became aware of my part in the eyes of my victimhood. I had quite a relevant list already. I just had to ask myself some questions and expect truthful answers for myself. Do I really know what an amends is? Do I know the different types of amends available? Do I realize that amends is not about forgiving somebody else for their part in our resentment? The amends is my voiced intention to change my behavior, either in written, verbal, action, or a living amends. And I need to consider the types of amends that best pairs with the situation that needs amending. Grace and self-appreciation of my own journey, as well as a better comprehension of the origins of my fears and resentments. So much, I, we should always mute our phones when we are presenting, sorry. So, and then we will fix that cracked screen in a moment. Um, so, sorry, where was I? Um, so grace and appreciation of my own journey as well as a better comprehension of the 
of the origins of my fears and resentments help me accept responsibility for consequential behaviors born out of my defensive traits. When I am humble and I am willing to become accountable, I can be encouraged that soon the truth will lift a weight that has rested on me for long enough. I am willing to consider and practice the various methods of making an appropriate amends. Whether I write a letter to a person, place, or thing and actually deliver it in its physical form or not is going to vary with every opportunity for amends. The mission here is to put the resentment to rest by accepting my role in any deluded thinking that has kept this situation from resolving. So for my uh, homework, I began my, with my fourth step inventory list and I worked the eighth, eighth step chart that we have in determining, in determining my willingness to meet the challenging amends criteria with each amends candidate. I went through the list and decided if I was completely willing to do a deep and thorough amends, or did this belong on a maybe later list or possibly a no way list? I thought, I thought of the easiest way to make an amends to the hardest harms I had committed in my effort to lighten the load as much as possible. My goal wasn't for this to be an overly complicated and painful for anyone, especially me, but rather intended to be a simple admission of a defect of character that I had used to express myself and that I wanted to have removed from my nature. I began to write my humbled truth as it related to the situation. Writing the truth is where I learned to practice rafting the rapids of all of my grievances and reactions down the rabbit hole and into the pond of forgiveness for myself and some enlightened perspective of the situation needed amending. Once I had unconditionally shared my truth with myself, I could now decide if it was an amends that I'll share with others. I can communicate with others personally or electronically, telepathically, whatever is most likely to bring a well-rounded closure to an open wound. My previous steps have shown me that I was once on my knees, that I could crawl, that I could learn to walk away, and that if I'm willing to trust the outcome to a higher power of my own understanding, that I'll eventually earn a set of wings that will keep me above my fray. A good step nine can replace, can replace the pain I've known and the pain I've caused with a serenity of self-forgiveness and pride into making it to another hilltop. I want to make amends, but where do I start? Tell the truth to myself and let the rest fall into place. So thank you for letting me share that. And with that, our next speaker um, for tonight is Catherine. Thank you, Abby. Hi, everybody. I'm Catherine. I'm an adult child and alcoholic and a recovering codependent. And we are on step eight. Where did the time fly? Um, you know, we had to do some things to get here. Um, we had to go through a fourth step chart. We had to really recognize our behaviors and our character defects, which still stings a little bit, character defects, um, core issues, whatever you want to call them. Um, and then we had to admit to another person and to God or a higher power um, what was the exact nature of my wrongs. Um, after doing that, asking, you know, my higher power to help with removing these defects, okay? So I know what they are. I identified what I do and how I affect others and how I've harmed myself and how I harm others. So I've done a lot of work by this point. And now all I need to do, step eight is asking, to be willing to make an amends, to be willing to forgive myself and others for either the harm that I've created or the harm that I've received. And so some skill sets that I've acquired in recovery um, are humility, honesty, um, you know, to stop blaming, stop shaming, 
stop giving back what I received and how I was trained early in life um, and change my behavior. And change is stressful no matter what kind of change it is. Even if it's a positive change, it's still stressful. So dealing with all of that, um, I have a very clear vision of who I am, what I don't want to do anymore, and who I need to forgive. I have a list. And now the question is, am I willing? Yes, I'm absolutely willing on my very short list. Um, I've done this a few times, and my list has gotten shorter and shorter and shorter. And um, to the point where it's really not a big, heavy load anymore. Um, I have whittled it down. I have made amends in the past. And I really, um, I use a guideline, which is a person, place, or thing that I find disturbing. Aha, there's my path. If I find something disturbing, it's time to really start delving into why. Why is that disturbing? And usually it's something within me. It's something that I have either done, committed, or am still working on. Um, so I can identify things that I do and it annoys the heck out of me when other people do it. But, um, you know, as far as like blame goes, I have to put that aside. I have to, you know, get back to who I am and how I wanna live my life. And then what is it costing me not to make an amends? If I go forward carrying a burden, how much is that costing me in just personal happiness? Um, so it's, it's kind of a decision, you know, it's a decision to, to make on who you will, who you won't, who you absolutely won't. I have a lot of people that have passed on that have created harms that I consider harms for me, but on further investigation, on further, you know, understanding is that most people did not know that they were harming me. They were just being them. You know, my father was an alcoholic. He was trying to medicate himself from whatever pain he had. And as a result, there was a lot of wreckage in that path. And a lot of people got hurt. So, you know, a lot of times taking things less personally is one of my um, new behaviors. And maybe not, not really um, assigning something to it you know, just a more observation than assigning blame. Um, a lot of times not reacting is a perfect um, behavior to not react and just let time pass and see what happens and not jump to a conclusion. And these kind of behaviors came about as a really good fourth step and a really thorough five, fifth step. So, Thank you for listening, and I will pass the baton to Ellen, who will share. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ellen. I'm an adult child, codependent, and alcoholic. And so when I will share about how I did my eight, um, step nine, how I made amends. But first, I'll t I want to read... Um, See, we made a step. Step A is made a list of all the persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to all of them. So, what does this step mean? It means to let go of our wrongs and clean up our past. Um, getting for the first time or taking back our personal power, becoming empowered, and sharing about making amends to others. Um, the purpose of step A is the willingness and self forgiveness. So when I make amends to somebody, I am not doing it for them. I'm doing it for me. And um, when, I, when I make the amends, I don't bring up the wrongs of others. I bring up my wrongs, whether it's a perpetrator or whatever. I bring up what I did. So 
what I did is I made a list and of who I wanted to, I looked at my fourth step and I picked out who I definitely would make amends to and who I might make amends to and who I will not make amends to, not directly. And then I chose, I, there's different ways to make amends. There are several ways to make them directly and that's by a letter, by phone, email or text, in person, at their grave, et cetera. Or you can do a living amends and that is different than making direct amends. It means living a completely new and no, non-compendent, not codependent, healthy, emotionally sober lifestyle. It means being committed to that lifestyle for both yourself and those who you've harmed in the past. Living amends also means creating real changes through true and honest behaviors. It is following an emotionally sober and healthy lifestyle. Living amends literally means changing the way you live. One may also make an indirect amends with a confessional to a professional. So when I made my list, the first one on my list was my daughter, Dina. Um, I had gone through a really bad divorce and their dad said to me, he was not, he was um, emotionally at one point, he was physically abusive and I was afraid of him. And so when we were going through the divorce, I wanted, um, he did a number of different things. And so I was in fear and I, went more into drinking and stuff but um he told me that when I got divorced him I divorced my children so we went for joint custody with him having the kids live with him and then he wouldn't let me see them and I tried I had to make an appointment to see my own kids with joint custody it didn't make sense but you know I a lot of things happened. So there was a lot of resentment there and hatred and whatever, but the ones that got hurt were my children. I had a, I have a son and a daughter. And so when I started going through this, I knew I needed to make amends to her first. And so I called and I did it directly. I went to her house and we met and she wanted me in her life anyway, because she just had a little girl, my granddaughter, my and so she wanted me to get be part of her life so it worked out great because she invited me to come visit and I went over there and we talked you know I know that's more for step nine um, to do but I made it in person and before when I made the amends all the way driving from North Carolina to Florida I just said you know no expectations because having an expectation when making amends is it's not what it's about. It's not their reaction, whether they forgive you or whatever. It's not about them. It's, it was me cleaning my side of the street. So, um, so I made the list. I listed my behavior on this chart, the type of amends that I wanted to make. And then Am I completely willing and maybe I'm willing and not willing. So like my dad, he died, but I still felt I needed to make amends to him. So I drove to New York and read, uh, wrote him a letter and read the letter at his gravesite. And so, and I've done that with other people that I couldn't make amends directly. I would write the letter, put it away, write it you know, read it again. I could burn it. I finally did make amends to my son. That was by letter. I mailed the letter to him and that took time. And one thing that I know when making amends, you don't have to do it all at once. You know, of mine over time, I did my amends, but that's basically it is choosing the amends that you would like to make with the people that are on your amends list using the fourth step chart of the people that were on that chart to, to make the list and deciding whether you will or will not and what kind of amends. So with that, I'll, um, I guess we're gonna go into the sharing portions. Cause I am done, thank you for listening. Okay, so we will please now go into our sharing portion, raise your digital hand and if calling in, 
please raise your hand by notifying the chat room. If you have a question, you cannot put in the chat box. You can email anatomy 12 steps 2022 at gmail.com, which will be monitored by our trusted servant, Ava. It is now time to open up for discussion on step eight. Please limit your share to three minutes. The timer will notify if needed. Okay. Thank you, Alan. Emily, go ahead. I am Emily, adult child and uh, codependent. Uh, thank you for your recovering. I would like, hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, I would like to say that when I started this step, I was like, okay, list the persons that I had harmed. Well, this person, this person, this person, this person had harmed me. And I guess kind of the way I was looking at it was that, okay, well, it, it was presented to me as this is you cleaning up your side of the street. So you make amends, you make amends where you clean up your side of the street. There's, there's things that you did in every situation, either you reacted or you imploded or exploded or something. And that was your part of it. And my qualifier, my reason for coming into the program, I had reacted, I had done all this. Um, and so I was like, okay, so some people I know I owe amends to, I, I get that. But then I know I also had, as an adult, I know I had a part in maybe some of my family of origin stuff as well. Um, but I, I said, and I went, when we got to the step, you know, I know this is down the road, but when we got to the step of actually writing the amends, I, I was getting to the point where, can I write these people a letter? Can I, can I actually make amends? And I tried so many times and I talked with my sponsor and she was fantastic. And she, she went to her sponsor just to make, just to get, you know, absolute clarification. And I, what we kind of came up with was that because I couldn't, I was willing, so I did start off kind of willing, but I couldn't, I was, I was looking at her like, I can't, I can mend to this person because as a child, I didn't, I wasn't responsible for, for things then. I wasn't responsible for the stuff that happened when I was, I'm responsible for the stuff now, obviously, but I, I still couldn't bring myself to write the letter or do anything like from, from the adult me on. Um, and it became, became clear to me the resentment I had was to myself. I, there, there is maybe some lingering resentment about, um, you know, family relationships as they were getting close to exiting. Um, but I have gotten to the point where, as I was getting ready to write those letters, I got to the point where I knew hurt people hurt people. So it was necessarily forgiveness, but it was definitely a, Okay, I know where I know where they come from. I don't like it, but I understand it. It wasn't right, but I understand. You know, I, I get where they're coming from. But the I realized, okay, wait, the real person that I need to make amends here to, I need to make another amends to myself. Um, I because I was still I couldn't I was still struggling with with how my own reaction. I couldn't I, I couldn't um, as a child with all that stuff going on. I couldn't. I obviously couldn't take part in that, but now as an adult, I can take part in my reaction now. And so even looking back on that family situation, I was still holding my own resentment. So that was, I realized, okay, first person's first, that's, new. that's, a, that's an amends letter to myself. So I ended up writing too, but I just wanted to share that um, sometimes going through this process, you're like, oh yeah, that's still me, that's still me. So if you feel like maybe you put a, a wall or maybe you owe somebody an amends that you, you're not sure where, check and make sure um, that you're still that you're still cleaned up with that. <laughs> and I, I guess that's just kind of where, where I wanted to, um, to shed some light on because of, that was my experience kind of going through that. So thank you for letting me share that. Thank you, Emily. Amy? Hi, I'm Amy, and can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I loved the handout, the step eight, the keys. I thought they were excellent. Number two, in step eight, we are facing our lives and we're claiming our future one day at a time. We know what we are doing. 
We know it is okay to talk, trust, and feel. We know that we have a greater choice instead of decorated control. And does that mean like when you say decorated, does that mean, well, we'll just talk uh, if anybody has any input on that. But we know that we are moving forward with the help of our ACA group. We can trust ourselves. We know it is okay to know who we are. And that was just spoken about. And then in uh, key five, it says, in addition to willingness, a key concept of step eight is self-forgiveness, which was just talking about talked about. We cannot forgive another until we forgive ourselves. And I think that's huge. And for me, it's a, it's a spiritual, mental, and physical um, maturity when I can move on and not have to point my finger at anybody else and then realize that while I've been pointing my finger at other people in my life, I'm just as guilty and uh, there's no reason for me to point a finger. I just have to keep my focus on me and not on he, she, or it, or they. You know, I can even have resentment against an organization. I can have resentments against a building. I can have, <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy where I can go with my thoughts, but that's me. It's not anybody else. It's me. And so I have to... Uh, be mature and step up to the plate and say, hey, maybe maybe this might be do, have to do with me, not anybody else. So I'm glad I'm here and I appreciate all that y'all do. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. When you say the word decorated control, what comes to mind for me is control. When we know control for what it really is, it's kind of ugly, but we can really dress it up. You know, that's what I... And I felt that was referring to. Uh, Pat, go ahead. All right, let me get myself off mute. Can you hear me okay? Yes. I hope it's okay, great. Um, to me, step eight was in some ways pretty easy, you know, to make a list. Well, what my sponsor had me do was to go back and look at the charts. We make a list of the people we have harmed and that was pretty easy because really column one of those charts had most of those people that I had harmed in. So that was pretty easy. Um, and become willing. Very honestly, after doing a thorough step five with my sponsor, that one wasn't very difficult either. And the reason was when I did a fifth step, I started seeing how my selfishness, how my deluded thinking had got me to the place of fear and resentment. And I wasn't, I, I didn't want to be that kind of person. So kind of like Ellen talked about, you know, I ended up doing the, the, three columns of those I would, those I was not sure I would do, and those I was thinking, I don't know about this one, you know, but it was just, it was making the list, and it, to me, it was easy to forgive mom and dad, because by then, I had really accepted they were doing the best they could with the deluded thinking they had learned growing up. So I felt like I had, in a way, soap in my mouth. I have said this many times. That, that wasn't the kind of loving person that I wanted to be. So the willingness was a little bit easy for me, too. Step nine was a whole lot more complicated than when we get to step nine. I'll talk about that one, too. But I know we're just really kind of covering eight right now. So to me, step eight wasn't too hard. Um, step nine was a little bumpier. But anyway, I'll put myself on mute and let somebody else share. Thank you, Pat. Alan? Can we ask questions about this step too? Or Yes, you can. Um, I guess it's like willingness to, um, yeah, it's like that willingness. But what if like, I guess on step eight, um, I guess step eight and nine, I guess, you know, transitioning. Um, it's like, I know we should be doing the, the um, amends, but it's just like, um 
I guess if we're not willing to do for some people, like she would just wait and, you know, but I know it should be done sooner, <laughs> but it's just kind of like, no, I'm not, if we're not ready, I guess that's what it is. And uh, like, should we push ourselves to just do it anyway? Or, um, you know, <laughs> like just wait. That's just kind of my question, you know, it's like, that, that's, I don't know if it's clear, but that's just what I have right now. Yeah, it's clear, Ellen. And the chart I think will help the chart when you, actually say am I willing if you're not willing you're not ready you know wait until you are maybe you don't understand the whole piece you know maybe you need to think further on that maybe work more with your sponsor on that or work on you know why you should make an amends or why you shouldn't make an amends you have to be comfortable with it it's not an apology it's really um it's really a way to unburden your soul um, with the harms that have been committed to you or the harms that you've committed towards others. You know? So, and, yeah, and the Catherine, chart is there add, to help you. Go ahead, Pat. Catherine, I want to add to that. I agree with you. Don't push. Because if we push, we make mistakes. If I'm not willing, I need to go back to my sponsor and I need to go back to that fourth step chart because I need to understand it clearly before I get to the point of making amends. I remember when I first came into Al-Anon, they kept saying, if you get to a step and you're uncomfortable with that step, you need to back up and do the steps before then, because you're not ready to do that step. And I agree with that, with, with what Catherine said, we don't push it. We need to back up, find a sponsor, find somebody that I feel like I can talk to before before I get to the point of making amends, where I'm comfortable making that amends. I'd like and to thank you, Pat. And Ellen, you know, you might even ask yourself, why do I need to make an amends? And then what kind of an amends, which we're gonna be sending out this week and the different kinds of amends that you can do. We'll be talking more about it next week. Go ahead, Emmy. Um, I'd also like to say that for me, um, just practicing making amends really helped. You know, um, I did kind of start with the with the ones I was more comfortable with, and the more I practiced, the more I um, I don't want to say perfected it because we're 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 not after perfection. Um, but the 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 more you practice it, the more pliable it gets and the more and I, I agree with with Pat and Catherine um, if you're not ready to make an amends for a certain person go back and examine why but the next time you circle around I think that um, you know some of the stiffness gets uh, worked out a little bit but thank you thank you Abby Hortensio hi everyone good evening um, I think one of my main difficulties with this is that I get ahead of myself. So I can be on step five and I already thinking about step nine. And there's a reason for these steps to be in a specific order. And there's, and I think for me, the biggest challenge is focus on the step you're working. And I'm such my go-to um, traits of being an ACA is rescuing, solving, um, you know, overworking. So as I'm on step five, I'm already wanting to find the solution. And this is a program that is meant to be done along with your sponsor. And I have found myself thinking about solutions from my own uh, sick mind and that is why in step eight, you also talk about with your sponsor and things that I was thought that this should be the way to do my step nine, my amends, is completely codependent to. So I have so many blank spots that for me, it's very important to focus not on the amend process, but in what the, what the um, step is actually asking me to do. It's not asking me to make amends is asking me just to be willing. And I think my, my challenge is to focus on one step at a time.
Thank you, Hortensia. Would anyone else like to share? Oh, okay, uh, Madeline. Okay, I'll go. Um, step eight uh, to me is figuring out what I'm going to do or who I'm going to make amends to in step nine. So I want to kind of concentrate on that part at the moment. Um, I do have people that I sponsor to make three columns, put people, places, things, situations in one of the three columns. Now those people, places, things, or situation came from their fourth step chart. And the three columns are, I will make amends to these, I may make amends is the second column. And the third column is I will not make amends to them. And people have said, but some people that I have been hurt or I have hurt are now dead. So I don't put them on my sheet, right? I said, no, we can do that. It doesn't matter like Helen has already said earlier, it doesn't matter whether that person has died or not. We can still make amends to them because the whole point of making amends is to clean up our side of the street, not theirs. So yes, we can make amends to them. And like, like has already been said, you might can even go back to their grave and make amends there. And that's exactly what I did with my own dad. Uh, he had already died before I got into recovery. So I wrote up an amends letter, checked it with my sponsor. I didn't get it at all. I had to redo that letter, check it with my sponsor a second time. And then the sponsor said, okay, you're now ready to make, make amends to your dad. And I went to the cemetery and read the letter to him there. And that's a, a funny story there too. But you know, it, the fact that the person has died doesn't mean you don't make amends to them. Another person that really needs to be on that list is usually ourselves. I had uh, harmed myself and I had been really resentful toward myself because I hadn't snapped out of childhood and into adulthood with lots of skills and know-how. I didn't know how to be an adult. And I didn't know what, you know, there was no adult child meetings when, when I got into recovery. So I really didn't understand that I really had not grown up. Physically, I had grown up. Yes, I had gotten married. I had a child by that time. But emotionally, I was not an adult. I was still acting out as a child. So I had to put myself on this list. And that one I could do. I put that in the column of those I will make amends to. That middle column are those that I may make amends to. And some people have said, but I don't know where these people are. True, and we can try to find them. And there are really neat ways to try to find it now with technology. And we can try to find them on Facebook. We can try to find them on some of those applications that are free, by the way. And you can still try to find people that way. You can also pay, what is it, $15 to try to find somebody. Uh, I'm so cheap, I would never do that. But there are ways to find people if we want to. Plus, we can be willing to make amends to them if we ever find them in the future, if we ever bump into them. Maybe, they will, maybe they'll come to a high school reunion and you weren't expecting them to be there but you can make amends there. But learning how and being willing to make amends is to say, you know, I'm willing to clean up my past. And I think that's what this step is all about, is being willing to clean up the past that we have been a part of. One more thing too I wanna say, and then I'll, I'll stop. And that is many of us were harmed as children and making amends or telling somebody, I forgive you for what you did to me. That's not what we're talking about here. 
we're making amends for carrying resentment or fear or anger into our adult life. I agree with what's been said before, and that is that as children, we could not have made amends. We were, we were too inexperienced. We didn't understand what was going on. And on top of that, we were tiny. And some of these people that harmed us were big adults. So we could not have made, we didn't understand and we, could, we weren't big enough to do it, but we can do it as an adult. One lady said to me that I really like is making amends meant telling the person that I was wrong because uh, I carried a resentment towards you for years and years, and then maybe explaining why. But I think the first thing is step you know, step eight is getting ready to make the amends. And that's what the three columns did for me. Thanks for letting me share. Thanks, Melene. Dave? Hi. Um, the first time that I made it to step eight, I remember telling my sponsor, yeah, I mean, I understand how resentment can destroy lives. I've seen it happen with many other people, and and I see how it can happen with me, but I'm not ready to make amends to this one person. And, you know, it took me a couple weeks to get ready. And then subsequent with that and subsequent to that, if I'm not at least willing to make an amends with someone, for me, I need to go back and at a minimum, do another step four and five. I mean, for me, it's uh, somehow my character defects are getting in my way. <laughs> and I can usually find those out with, with doing a step four or five. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree not, not to force anything. But, um, you know, my... Uh, you know, when I'm acting out of my character defects, and according to AA, we only have three of them, you know, selfishness, dishonesty, and inconsideration. Um, you know, if I'm acting out of that, I'm usually, you know, not, I have no business making amends with anybody when I'm acting out of that. Thanks for letting me share. Thanks, Dave. Barbara? Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Barbara. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot to say. I just know when I started to do uh, step eight, you know, the first person that I put on the, in the column that I had harmed was myself. And I remember when I had done some work on step eight in another program, that same thing occurred. Uh, I put myself... Uh, First, because I realized from uh, step four that I saw a pattern of which showed ways in which I had harmed myself um, in many ways by not standing up for myself, by, um, you know, just uh, demeaning myself and allowing others to um, take advantage of me. Um, because like I heard someone else mention, I just, you know, I came out of a home where both my parents were uh, really severe alcoholics and they were just uh, weren't emotionally available for me. So of course I didn't, I came out of that um, environment um, emotionally um, unavailable and crippled in so many ways and just did not know um, how to deal with life and how to do, um, how to function in a healthy way. So, um, you know, it, it really uh, helped me to understand how you know, the, a, a lot about the choices I've made and, and uh, what, you know, what I did to harm myself. Uh, and I did have, uh, I put my son 
on my list too. And uh, and of course, I was definitely, you know, I put myself as completely willing. Um, and then my son, I was willing. And, you know, everybody that I put on my my list, I said I'm, I'm completely willing, because for me, to it, it uh, doing this step of becoming willing, in my mind, is going to help me to be um, to have a healthier relationship with myself, and hopefully have a, re a healthier relationship with other people. And I know, you know, um, I can remember when I um, did this step and um, it, it goes into a little bit of step nine and I did make amends to my mother the day before she died. And um, it was really um, eye-opening enlightening for me because of her response to the amend that I made. It really uh, kind of threw me for a loop. And uh, maybe when we get to uh, step nine, I will share um, more about that. But um, I am definitely willing to do, to make the amends to these people, to anybody that are har harmed. And I I was, I, and I, I, sometimes I thought when I was trying to, when I was doing this, I was thinking too hard because I couldn't find, couldn't come up with a lot of people. And I thought I needed to come up with a lot of people that I had harmed. But uh, I just, I could not because I'm, I think for, in so many ways, I was a people pleaser. And um, I did more things to try to help people than to harm people. And I might have harmed. You know, I, I know sometimes I did enable, did some enabling that did harm some people and I was able to accept and to look at that and, um, you know, make, a, make amends. I'm willing to make amends for that, uh, for those things too. And I just, uh, there was one reading on step and this book that really spoke to me. It's called The Language of Letting Go. And I just want to read a little bit of it. It says, the, the eighth step is not meant to punish us. It's meant to set us free from guilt, anxiety, and discord. We begin by making a list of everyone we have harmed on our journey as we have struggled to survive. We have probably done more damage to ourselves than to anyone else. So we put ourselves first on the list, which is exactly what I did. Often, our tendency is to feel guilty about everything we've done, everyone we've come in contact with, and that is unearned guilt. Writing helps clarify whether or not we are punishing ourselves for no reason, but we need to be open to guidance as we work this step, getting everything out of us and on paper so we can be healed. Once we have made the list, we strive to become willing to make amends to everyone on it because that is how we will heal. Making amends does not mean feeling guilty and ashamed and punishing ourselves. It means swallowing our pride and our defenses and doing what we can to take care of ourselves. And we become ready to improve our self-esteem by taking responsibility for our behaviors. And we become willing to have our relationships with others, ourselves, and our higher power restored. And that's something that's very important to me. So thank you for giving me the opportunity to share. And with that, I'll pass. Thank you, Barbara. Nancy? Hi, um, I'm Nancy, uh, Alan on. Coda, ACA, um, and the part that I want to fo focus on, um, a lot of people already said a lot of the stuff I was going to say, but there's one part that I don't think has been said yet, and that is about the word willing. Um, if there's somebody that I have harmed and I am not yet willing to make amends, then I need to go back to step four 
to understand what I did wrong to that person. That's already been said. The part that hasn't been said is that in step three, I made a decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of a higher power. So if I am not, not willing in step eight to make amends to somebody and I know I've wronged them, then I need to go back to step three as well. And I need to pray to my higher power to make me willing. Or I need to pray to my higher power to help me see what it is that I need to see about the situation or about my attitude that's making me not willing. Um, I think everything else that I wanted to say has already been said, so I'll keep it short. That's all. Thanks, Nancy. Jane? Hi, I'm Jane, codependent. Um, so much of what I wanted to say has been said too, but the one point or the one thing that was said that I would like to emphasize um, is in this willingness, um, you know, like we've all said, step four, of course, is, is crucial. My having a clear understanding of my part, my wrong. But in addition, someone talked about expectations. And I know for me, this became really crucial. Um, and that is to be realistic. When I have expectations, especially for me, that expectation initially was I, I really wanted, when I admitted that I was wrong, I really <laughs> wanted something. I wanted that person to forgive me. And um, in one situation in particular, that didn't happen. And I kept making the amends and getting uh, beat up over and over. But that expectation that the other person would forgive me is really my codependency getting in the way. My thinking, uh, my, uh, it's an attempt really for me to control that other person, one, wanting something from them them, feeling like the only way I can really be free is if they forgive me. But the truth is, I am set free by letting go of the resentment toward myself or the, um, you know, because that, that was really my problem that I wasn't, I wasn't forgiving myself. And so I had to learn that I can't, I can't control how that other person responds or reacts to my, um, my amends. I have to set myself free. Um, my higher power has forgiven me. So I, I need to let go of it. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you, Jane. Grinnell. Hi, everybody. Glad to be here with you. Great um, discussion on this step, step eight. Um, yeah, so to me, I did have to put myself first on the list because um, I know that Melanie Beatty isn't a CODA conference approved or anything, but I did work the steps in a group years ago using one of her books, The Codependent's Guide to the 12 Steps. And something that hit me between the eyes was all of recovery, all of what I'm going through is about learning to make amends to myself. And that really struck me. And I knew that if I didn't work on forgiving myself for my very bad choices, and I did make very bad choices, um, that I couldn't possibly become willing or ready to go forward and make amends to anyone else. So it was that 
forgiveness of myself. And I appreciated what um, Barbara read. And the, the reading right after that reading is on willing to make amends. So I'm gonna read just a few excerpts from that because it struck me and I got my book out when she read. The A step is talking about a change of heart, a healing change. This attitude can begin a great chain of repair and healing in our relationships with others and again, ourselves. It means we become willing to let go of our hard heartedness, one of the greatest blocks to our ability to give and receive love. And I totally agree with that. That my, I had a hard heart at one time. I mean, I totally knew I was right and they were wrong. <laughs> And wow, this is about learning to become humble and admitting and really being able to look at my wrongs. Um, and it's like, it's also been alluded to, we don't run around and go, oh, so sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And that's what she says in the book. You know, we don't do that. We make our list not to feel guilty, but to facilitate healing. Before we actually make amends or begin to consider appropriate amends, we allow ourselves to change our attitude. And so in listening to the original question, I think that Ellen had, it's about when I do that work, I can then become willing to become willing, but first I believe it starts with me and my change of heart. So that's where I had to start for me. So I really appreciate all that I've heard tonight. Thank you so much. Glad I'm here with you. Thank you for now, Sylvia. Hi everyone. I'm from Windsor, Ontario, Canada, and I'm ACA. And um, I just wanna say this is my second time going around this. So uh, the anatomy of the 12 steps. And the first time I did this, I had a very heavy burden laying in my stomach and my body. And um, it was a real heavy load on me. And I, for the fourth step, I wrote about 58 people. And uh, some I couldn't make amends to because they had passed or they weren't in my life anymore. So I wrote letters anyways. And I burned them and it was a big relief. And I did make amends to all those people in different ways. Some I had to let go. And, but today I just want to say that doing it the second time, I feel so much relief in me. I feel freer. And there's only two people on that list that I have made amends to, but still keep coming back into my mind, but I still write a letter to them and I burn it or let it go and I continue to do that. And then the uh, character defect in me uh, loosens. It, it's just um, uh, magnificent in the way it has happened to me. And um, in the last two years, that, uh, two years ago we did this, as since then, I recognize my defects and to those people, I don't owe any amends because I've changed my attitude and it's a great uh, system and I'm really relieved today. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Um, I would like to share something that I read that really inspired me about step eight and it is from Believing in Myself by Ernie Larson and Carol Hegarty. Um, it's May 10th and it says, you can't shake hands with a closed fist. Are you, are you one who keeps a list? Many of us take very careful count of all that has been lost with the scrupulous exactitude of resentment. We tally up every wrong that was done to us, every privilege or pleasure that we were denied, every hardship or obstacle that blocked our way because we make such an effort to record everything. Our list grows and grows with each passing year and the longer it gets, the better we like it. Justifying resentments can be mighty satisfying. 
The problem is that list making keeps us fixated at the point of our losses. It nails us to the past, forever victimized, forever on the lookout for more of the same. Resentment closes the hand to a fist. How can a fist reach out in friendship or reconciliation? How can a fist receive love or any other gift? A fist may be fine for clutching a grubby little pencil and slashing away at a yellow old scorecard, but it closes off too many good things. Nobody ever gave anything to a fist. Most of the items on our list may be factual. Some may even be criminal, but what real purpose is served and what price is paid by compiling a catalog of misery? Wouldn't it be better to let that stuff go? Bad enough that those things happened at all. Worse yet, that we're still keeping them alive. I can't hang on to the old and reach out for the new at the same time. Thank you for letting me share. Anybody else have a burning desire to share? Any other thoughts on our list of resentments for tonight? Or questions? Well, with that, um, let's Janice, Ellen Janice to your. Has her, Janice oh, has her hand up. Oh, Janice, go ahead. Yes, it's very short, but I just wanted to share something with everyone that helped me on that willingness um, issue, it, because that's a, definitely an area that I have struggled with. But one of the things that we realized, or I have been taught that we realize that God is not disappointed in our histories. And that's what broke me down so much to forgive myself and then be willing to make amends when that love began to grow in my heart. And that's all I wanted to share. Thank you. Thank I you, Janice, one. for now. Go ahead. Yeah, I just have one more thing to add. To me, it's just like the old Nike commercial says, just do it. <laughs> I just had to just do it. Make that, do the chart, write it in, start somewhere with me first for me. That's what I did. Then who's the second, the next person on there and so on. And it will, you will be able to make the list and then you'll be ready for step nine. So um, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you for now. If there is no other person that wants to share, we'll go ahead and close out the meeting.